Ah, <sighs> welcome back to the channel, guys. This was my first week back at work after my long vacation, and I'm feeling a little tired. But I still uh, feel that I had the time and uh, that I wanted to shoot this video before my family comes back. Uh, and to give you the rundown of the new Seiko Solar that I bought because I've been getting a lot of questions about the watch and I thought I'd share that with you before all, hell's, all hell breaks loose on this Friday evening when I've been away from my family for two days. Ah. As you guys know, uh, I really don't um, love Seiko anymore. I started uh, collecting, when I started collecting watches, I bought a lot of Seikos and I really loved the brand. And uh, something happened along the way that made me fall out of love with them. I guess I grew tired with the QC quality, quality control issues all the time that I seemed to have, uh, uh, that I seemed to have on my watches, the watches that I bought, misaligned bezels, misaligned chapter rings, and just, I just grew tired of always having to uh, uh, see something that I didn't like or see something that wasn't perfect on a watch that I spent money on, no matter the amount that I spent, and I just left Seiko behind and continued uh, collecting other brands but then uh, a couple of months ago I saw a beautiful Seiko watch that just hooked me that just got my attention right away by looking at the picture and I just had to buy it and it in kind of a way it rekindled my love for Seiko because I really like this watch that I'm about to show you and uh, a lot of you seem to like it as well because I get a lot of questions about it but even though I like it I have to talk about value in this video and I'm gonna wrap up the intro right away just give me one more second we have to talk about value today because even though this is a beautiful watch it is not giving you the value that I think that you deserve when paying 600 euros for this watch it's not giving you the value that Seiko think that they're giving you they're actually demanding more money of you than the quality that they're giving back and I'm gonna run down all the details in the video. So let's switch the camera and take a look at the watch on the table. And yeah, bear with me. Okay, here we go. The watch that brought me back to Seiko and the watch that has given me a lot of questions and a lot of likes because people seem to love the look of this one. Let's open up the box. I'm not gonna waste any time uh, with the unboxing because I've already done that. You can see that in the separate video. As you can see, it's a standard Seiko box. We have the manual, the warranty card in the bottom and then we have the box in the box <clears throat> and inside this we have the beautiful Seiko SNE 569P1 and then we have some extra spare links and as you can see here we have the price tag uh, SNE 569P1 it's the recommended price in Sweden 5998 Swedish crowns that's approximately six hundred and twenty dollars i don't really know the conversion rate right now but it's 600 euros something like that let's just put that there and uh, put the box away and take a look at the watch itself take it off from the pillow <coughs> and here it is i showed you the watch in the unboxing and now i'm showing it to you again oh sorry i almost forgot wrist check i'm wearing my g-shock uh, casio gray and uh, there it is and here we go back to the Seiko as you can see it's a solar powered quartz watch as you can tell by the ticking of the second hand right there and the one thing that immediately drew me to this watch was that beautiful 
beautiful blue bezel insert it's a faded blue almost gray in some lights almost black in other lights and when I saw this in my Facebook feed uh, sorry guys I had some kid uh, I drew, drew some pictures with some kids at preschool and I just couldn't rub off the black paint on me so I'm sorry about that uh, anyway the thing that drew drew me to this watch was that bezel it looks fantastic it looks vintage it somehow for some reason reminds me of a vintage Tudor Submariner I'm gonna post a picture of a Tudor Submariner right here in the corner and you tell me if it doesn't look like one I actually had a lot of people tell me that it looks nothing like a Tudor Submariner vintage Submariner but I think it does and for me it is that's the way it looks it's a sweet little thing looks good the bracelet is almost all polished uh, there we have the clasp with the Seiko logo on the back let's take a look at the back side as you could guess we have the wave the famous wave and we have some information it's a divers watch 200 meters I, um, I don't know if it's true but I think that it, they can only name the watch a diver watch if it's uh, ISO certif if it has some kind of ISO certification uh, please let me know if that's true uh, sapphire crystal stainless steel yeah the deal the whole deal as I said the thing that drew me to this watch was the looks and I really love the look of it. It's a Prospects, it's a Seiko, it's a Prospects uh, spec Seiko. Uh, it's a solar powered watch and some specifications on this little baby here. We have a solar powered movement inside of this one. It's called the V147. It's a quartz movement and it gives you an accuracy of plus minus 15 seconds a month. And that's great. The great thing with a quartz watch is that you can just pick it up. You don't have to wind it. It always uh, shows you the correct time. You can have it in a drawer. You can have it lying on your bench for two months and just pick it up and wear it immediately. And that's the great thing about quartz. Some people don't like quartz watches. They say that they're soulless. I understand what they mean, but still... I have a place in my heart for quartz watches and this is one of the most beautiful quartz watches I have ever seen. Let's continue with the specifications, sorry. Uh, when it's fully charged it gives you uh, a battery life of 10 months, that's great. Uh, stainless steel, diameter 38.5 millimeters, so it's a small one, thickness 10.6 millimeters, it's a thin one as well and the lugs are actually we have a nice curvature on those lugs. Uh, the lug to lug is 46.5 millimeters. The lug width is 20 millimeters and it tapers down to 18, uh, as you can see there. And then the weight with all the links is 149 grams. We have a sapphire crystal. The water resistance is 200 meters. meters. And the loom is loomy bright on the hands, indexes and on the loom pip uh, on the pip there in the bezel we're gonna talk more about loom later uh, the warranty is two years it's a great watch it's nicely specced out and it looks really pretty you can see it has a substantial bezel on there easy to grip easy to rotate I'm gonna do that in just a second you have easy access to change out the strap take off the link put it on a NATO or on a rubber strap whatever you want as you can see it's polished on the upper side we have I mean sorry it's brushed on the upper side we have some polished details going out uh, I mean running along those bezels there bevels it's called bevels <laughs> and then it's all brushed the bracelet is similarly brushed with some polished details in this on the center links and then the clasp is all brushed with that Seiko lock it's actually a prolonged clasp which I like and it's prolonged because beneath this little part here we have a diver's extension I'm not gonna fiddle with it because last time I did this on a Seiko I didn't manage to get it back on but it's there it's a diver's extension that you're probably never going to use and it's there as you can see here we have pressed metal on the clasp and we have pins and colors on those links 
and there you can see pins and colors I'm I'm changing my mind on pins and colors I actually think they're uh, uh, they're a hell dealing with I, I, I have a really hard time exchanging them but they're really secure and that maybe is uh, a really nice benefit to have because uh, some watches with screwed links actually unscrew themselves unless you put in some some Loctite so I see the benefit of pins and colors I really like push I really dislike push pins but this is the step above pins and colors a hassle to uh, to navigate through and to exchange but there when you have them put on right they're just tight in there and they're never gonna fall off so it's a great looking watch a fantastically looking watch let me just take off my Casio gray right there put it away and then put this baby on on my 20 centimeters humongous wrists still this watch I really think I'm pulling it off as I said it's only 38.5 uh, millimeters in diameter and it's only 46.5 millimeters on the lug to lug but still as you can see I think I'm wearing this great it looks great it feels great I'm loving the prolonged clasp there uh, I like the feel of this watch and I like the look of it it's a beautiful watch and I've been wearing it now for three weeks and I like wearing it I really do we have some issues though and we're gonna discuss them in a second just gonna take it off again and I'm just gonna show you that bezel action on this one the first thing to say about the bezel is that it's actually centered I don't know how many times you can say that about a Seiko watch uh, I've had a lot of Seikos who are misaligned in the bezel but this one is spot-on centered let me just uh, give you a little voice sample of the bezel action and there it is you can hear we have really nice clicks we have that spongy Seiko sound we have no movement in between clicks it actually oh, sorry, it actually moves a little tiny tiny little bit but it's firmly secure when you put it in place and it feels great to navigate it's actually a really nice bezel action on this watch and as you can see on the bezel insert there we have some patterns in the bezel insert going around swirling around that bezel uh, insert and it it gives it a little a little deeper dimension than it than it would if it was just flat we have the Seiko logo just beneath the 12 we have a date window at 3 o'clock and then the prospects uh, logo solar divers 200 classy little uh, dial white indexes and the white second minute and hour hands it gives it a classy look no uh, it's not trying to be uh, particularly uh, eye-catching it's just a nice looking watch we have some brushing here I think it's nicely done I'm not an expert in brushing if it's nicely done or if it isn't I just appreciate that it's mostly brushed all over with some small polished details because it makes it a little more scratch resistant uh, I like the bracelet for what it is it's actually uh, one piece links it may fool you that you think that they're three pieces because of the polishing in the middle but they're not they're actually uh, one piece links there you go so when talking about this watch you just have to talk about the price uh, this price this watch as I said is six hundred euros that's a little above 600 US dollars and you cannot talk about this watch without talking about the price and I got a lot of comments about the price on this watch people saying that it's overpriced and just to show you that it actually in my opinion 
is overpriced is we have to compare it with another watch but before we do that I'm just gonna point out a little give you a little pointers we have the crown it's a it's a screw in crown but it's a really tough one to get a hold of because it's a really small and those little crown guards are actually covering it up really good even though they're really small as well and I have fat fingers so it's a really hard to navigate to get a grip on but when you get a grip on it it's not like it's uh, it must it's not like it's damaged or anything it it's cozy it it's easy to screw out easy to adjust the time everything is perfectly fine it's just hard to get a grip on it but let's screw it back on in it's not a signed crown as you can see it's a totally just flat crown with some brushing on it no Seiko logo no anything nothing then we have the second problem here we have actually hollow end links as you can see uh, I asked the guy the Seiko AD uh, here in my in my town and I asked him uh, how come one of uh, a watch for six hundred dollars has hollow end links and he said that it's just a way to save some money uh, I know some people love it. I know some people say that old vintage Rolexes they also have hollow end links, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I actually don't know if it's it's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe it cuts down on some weight, but I mostly think that it's actually a cost cutting uh, thing to do, giving you those hollow end links. And then we have the clasp. It's a pressed metal clasp. I actually don't like that I think it's a cheap way to go on a watch at this price point but it is what it is it's a pressed metal clasp uh, yeah and now just to give you a comparison because you cannot talk about um, a watch being overpriced without comparing it to another watch I mean you can but I'm gonna actually show you a straight-up comparison right here and in my left hand I have quite of a similar watch. This is the Citizen GMT World Time. <laughs> number BG 71002E as you can see the price there it's 278 euros if you buy it new that's less than half the price of the Seiko Solar and I'm just gonna give you uh, this watch is going to get its own little video but I'm gonna give you some specifications just so that we can compare it to the Seiko uh, this is actually also a solar powered watch but it's actually a echo drive watch it means that uh, it's powered up by any light source not just the Sun you can uh, shine a, a light on it anything you have that gives light will power up this watch the accuracy is similar it's 15 plus minus 15 seconds a month and the caliber in this one is called b877 quartz movement fully charged it gives you a battery for six months the diameter is 41 millimeters thickness is 13.3 millimeters we have a lug to lug of 49 millimeters we have a lug width of 22 tapers down to 18 we have a weight of 172 grams water resistance is 200 meters it's a mineral glass and we have a three-year warranty 
here you have the clasp as you can see it's also a little bit prolonged but it doesn't have a diver's extension because it's not a diver's watch it's actually a GMT and there you have the case back let me show it to you like that citizen echo drive as you can see solid end links and as you can see on the clasp it's actually a milled clasp no pressed metal here milled heavy duty clasp and solid end links right there nice little bracelet brushed all around we actually have push pins which is a step down if you're comparing it to pins and colors but still let's just show you these guys together here and just a little conclusion the similarities with these two watches I know I maybe I can hear you this is a GMT this is a diver but still there are a lot of similarities both are solar powered watches but this is actually powered by any light source both are Japanese brands both are stainless steel watches both are water resistant to 200 meters both have screw down crowns both have turnable bezels they're similar and yet for some reason the Seiko here costs more than double the amount of the Citizen sure you could argue that a sapphire glass is more expensive than a mineral glass but you could also argue that a milled clasp is more expensive than a pressed clasp you can also argue that hollow end links are cheaper to put on a watch than uh, milled uh, than solid end links sorry sorry about the miss uh, the, the miss there so i really don't see why this one costs so much i know seiko are going up in prices i know they're trying to do something with the brand and um, really um, make the prices a little bit higher so that maybe the brand can be uh, acknowledged as a little more upper class brand i don't know what the thing is with the higher pricing on the seikos but if you just take a look at these head to head they're so similar they offer you very very similar specs and yet on some points the citizen is actually better even though it's half the price it has solid end links it has a milled clasp it has a signed crown sorry i forgot to show you that one signed crown there uh, come on sake you couldn't you even sign the crown uh, and yeah so one area where seiko smashes a lot of the competition is within the loom and there's no difference here as you can see that lumibrite is giving you a really really strong shine and it actually lasts you a long time you can see that second hand ticking away there and if i take my hand and just pull it away from the camera as far as I can, you can still see that it's really legible. It's a really nice loom and it gives you... Actually, I've left this watch sitting on my bed table for one whole night and the loom was visible late into the night. So it's a strong loom and it lasts you a long time. And comparing it to the Citizen here, you might think that the citizen also has a, a great loom and it actually does in the beginning it actually dies down a lot faster than the seiko and the lumibrite is the clear winner here because it lasts you all night the citizen also has a really nice loom evenly applied you can see that second hand ticking away uh, and this is actually a nice uh, cool comparison between these two the citizen is a little more green the seiko is a little more on the blue uh, side of things uh, really nice loom on both of them but the seiko is the winner because this one won't last you all night long but this one will uh, let's get back to the video my conclusion of the seiko sne 569p1 is that it's a beautiful watch but in the same way that if you see a beautiful beautiful woman and if you approach her and uh, in this case I approached the watch I bought the watch you approach her 
and you get to know her a little better, there has to be more substance than just looks. This is a great looking watch. I'm, when I put it on my wrist, it looks fantastic. But the more I think about it, the more I go in depth thinking about the specifications of this watch, the more it disappoints me. Maybe it's the price tag disappointing me the most because I actually think that this watch is overpriced by at least $200. Uh, maybe it's the fact that I don't like a pressed metal clasp. Uh, the hollow end links I can live with. I really don't know what time does with it, uh, but still. But it just disappoints you that it's such an expensive watch and that it has doesn't back up those fantastic looks with some fantastic specs some might argue that the solar powered movement in this one is better than the echo drive movement in this one accuracy wise they're both the same this one uh, will give you 10 months of battery on a full charge this one will give you six months so i, I really don't know which is better but still this one is half the price and that actually made me sell this beautiful piece. I've already sold it and when I'm finishing this video I'm packing it up and sending it away to its new owner. It's a great looking watch and I hope that he can appreciate it more than I do but somehow it fell short for me. And uh, But still as I said I'm longing for a Seiko and that's a hard thing for me to say. I haven't been longing for a Seiko for a while and now I'm feeling that Seiko itch uh, uh, that I really want to have a Seiko in my collection. And I'm selling this but I actually already bought myself another Seiko and we have it right here. That's right the Seiko SKX 009 has made it back to my collection but we're gonna talk about this baby in a totally separate video but for now that was my I guess we could call it a review this time because I've actually worn it for a while that was my review short-term review of the Seiko SNE 569 P1 if you love the looks and if you can just uh, close your eyes for the things that this watch lacks I think you're gonna have a great watch on your wrist because it looks great and I guess with that solar powered movement you can wear this for years and years with without having to do anything with it for me it was just not perfect but for you it might be it would have been perfect if the price was lower so that's it for today folks as usual if you like the video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you like it really much and if you'd like to see more videos like this please consider subscribing that would help me out a lot and if you didn't like it give me a thumbs down and write what you didn't like and I'm actually going to try to improve the video to the next time but until the next time I hope you have a nice evening Bye-bye.